This has been the first actual video with this player's name in the title since the guy was drafted back in the 2021 NHL Entry Draft. We've mentioned his name in passing a few times, but at the end of the day, I really just don't think that this entire prospect was worth the draft pick and worth the trouble that the draft pick ended up bringing to the organization and the social media team, etc, etc. Because today I wanted to go back into 2021 and review the Montreal Canadiens' 31st overall pick, a guy that they took at the end of the first round, and a player that was very polarizing as a draft prospect. At the end of last year's first round, the Canadians selected Logan Mayu out of the London Knights in the OHL. Or I guess you should probably say SK Lejeune in the Hockey Etan in the Swedish League because the OHL was shut down in 2020-2021. But Logan Mayu was a guy that the Canadians took, and it was a pretty interesting pick. Not only because Logan Mayu was a big right-handed defenseman, that in which the Canadians didn't really have too much of, because, you know, the departure of Shea Weber, they hadn't made the Artari Lekin and Justin Barron trade just yet, so the right-hand defenseman depth on the Canadians was pretty lackluster. Not to mention the fact that in 19 games in the Etan, he had 15 points, and not to mention the fact that some people thought that Mayu probably should have been taken a little bit later. He was ranked to go 35th by TSN and Bob McKenzie, 58th by McKean's, and 50th by TSN and Craig Button, but the Canadians took him 31st. But the biggest and most damning part of it all was the fact that Logan Mayu himself said that he did not want to be drafted. This was because in Sweden he was convicted of a criminal charge, that in which I don't want to talk about. It's been discussed, and if you want to know what happened, hey, go ahead and check out the video that we made when the guy was drafted. But this was a player that at the end of the day, some people said could have been maybe a first-round pick. Others said he probably should have been a second-round guy. He said himself he didn't want to be drafted, and the Montreal Canadiens had to come out there and make statement after statement about how they're going to go out there and help this guy, and they want to help him reform and become a positive, contributing part of society, and that's all good to hear. You like to see the Canadiens fighting the good fight, but at the end of the day, my question to you here, is that really worth it? When you acknowledge how good the player was in general, when you acknowledge what happened as a result of the player's criminal conviction, and when you acknowledge who else was on the board at that 31st overall spot. The reason I'm making this video is because when Logan Mayu was drafted, the split second when the Canadian said Logan, my mind, and you could see this in the draft video too, I immediately went, Stankoven? 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 Because there was another prospect available in this range that I thought the Montreal Canadiens would probably go out there and see tremendous gains out of had they drafted him in that spot. Logan Stankoven is a current Dallas Stars prospect, taken 47th overall in the same 2021 draft. Now, whereas Logan Mayu is a big right-handed defenseman, Logan Stankoven is a small center right wing. He's 5'8", 170 as a right-handed forward, and this recent season with the Kamloops Blazers, he had almost two points a game, posting up 104 points in 59 total contests, 45 goals, 59 assists, and he had 31 points in 70 games in the playoffs. He also just suited up for Team Canada at the World Juniors in August here, and if you had been watching the tournament, especially towards the end, you would have seen Logan Sankoven and his entire line just completely go out there and start to take over shifts, dominate the play, and they really just started taking control. Whereas the Mason McTavish line, while they were all very good the entire tournament as well, they started taking a little bit more of a checking role towards the latter two end parts of the tournament. Stankoven and his boys went out there and scored a heck of a lot of points. Now, for Stankoven, he's a guy that actually has had a few setbacks himself. Obviously, being 5'8 holds him back from being a quote-unquote top prospect in the entire NHL, but at some point, you gotta go out there and look at the numbers and say, yeah, no, this guy's just really gosh darn good. Here's the scouting report on Elite Prospects. He is a fearless puck carrier, always driving the inside, and never shy about setting up shop near front of the net off the puck. He plays a north-south game and always attacks at unrelenting high pace. The mechanics behind his shot are so clean, exerting downward force while pushing his top hand off his body. 
Lo and behold, he has such a good skill set, especially for a 5'8 dude, that with his work ethic, his offensive prowess, his drive to succeed, and everything in his package as a hockey player, Logan Stankoven has become a quick fan favorite for every Dallas Stars fan going out there and cheering for this team to succeed. Even Canadian fans went out there and were super impressed by Logan Stankoven and the prospect profile he presents. Meanwhile, if you go over to Logan Mayu, we're going to jump back here to the Montreal Canadiens guy, he didn't end up playing in the OHL for half the season because of the criminal conviction that he had. In the 12 games he had with the London Knights, he had 9 points, and that's good to see if you're going out there and projecting Logan Mayu as a Canadiens prospect into the future, but at the end of the day, the question that I'm asking here is ultimately, was it worth it to take on this player? because there were already so many hurdles in the fact that he didn't want to be drafted, and there would have to be this entire rehabilitation process, not just with the hockey club that selected Logan Mayu, but with the fans and the media itself too, because everybody knew it was a public story of his criminal conviction in Sweden. And because of this entire thing, he ended up missing out on a good chunk of the OHL year. Now, you could say whether or not that's deserved, it's vindicated, it's whatever. I don't care about that. The fact is, it happened, and he was already a prospect that some people said probably should not have even been sniffing the first round. And so, was the positional need at right-handed defense really that much of a crux to go out there and say, okay, we know it's going to be a really big fan backlash if we take this guy. We know the guy said he didn't want to be drafted. We know that we're going to try to help him go out there and rehabilitate himself and become a proper prospect and a proper human being, and we know there might be some repercussions for that, but we are willing to go out there and take that risk because we need right-handed defense. And right-handed defense, that's big, too. I mean, there was another defenseman taken immediately after Logan Mayu at the start of the second round by the name of Olin Zellweger. That guy's a left-handed defenseman, and that guy just lit up the World Juniors as well. I kind of felt like the fit of Stankoven, and the reason why I kind of jumped to the immediate idea, oh, Stankoven's gonna be a hab, when they said Logan on the TV broadcast was like, Stankoven's a small, feisty forward. Like, you talk about small, feisty forwards, I get it, you could say the Montreal Canadiens have way too many of those, but... The fact that they have a lot of those already means that it's a formula that's proven to have worked. And I definitely don't think that a small WHL feisty winger would have been something the Canadians would, in theory, say no to, because they already had one of these in Brendan Gallagher. Now you have articles like this being published at NHL.com saying how Stars prospect Stan Coven has impressed at the World Junior Championship. The forward helps Canada win the tournament after being named the WHL Player of the Year. He also was named the top player or a top player on Team Canada, named by the coaches themselves. Not to mention his assist, his very good game-breaking assist on the golden goal scored by Kent Johnson in the overtime game against Finland. He was the guy who got the puck to the middle, and Johnson was able to put it in. That's that relentless pressure that Logan Stankoven goes out there, and I was always a huge fan of Stankoven, and I'm super biased. Like, I'm not going to go out there and deny that. But... There's a reason why I wanted these qualities on a prospect that if he was in the Canadian system right now, he would probably be the second most valuable guy behind Uri Slavkovsky. Meanwhile, for Mayu, there's still the court of public reputation that he still has to go out there and win, and as a result, I don't think he's ever going to get that back. Like, I understand the Canadians are going out there and they're trying to help him out, and the OHL had their own say in it as well, but... Still, even if you remove all of the crap that Logan Mayu had been a part of in his draft season, even if everything was 100% vindicated and forgiven, which I don't think is really going to be possible in the short-term future, even if you remove all that, him as a hockey player and him as a prospect, I still think that Logan Stankoven was a better player, man. And that's the point I'm trying to make. Somebody went out there and posted, I believe it was on Twitter. This is all just from my own recollection. I don't know if it's like 100% legit or whatever, but like somebody posted on Twitter a screenshot of them Instagram DMing Logan Stankoven because apparently the guy goes out there and replies quite often to people who DM him. And the person was like, hey, great performance at the World Juniors. I would have loved to have you on the Habs. And apparently just what I remember in my head, which might not be correct, but might be the case, if I'm remembering things properly, Stankova replied, hey, thanks. But yeah, the Canadians wanted the other Logan instead. And I was like, yeah, that's wild. I had the same thought too, back when the draft pick was made. But either way, talk to the comments all your thoughts about Logan Mayu and Logan Stankoven. There have been many conversations about the future of the Canadians' right-handed defenseman depth, and with players like Miguel Tournier, with players like... 
I don't know, Justin Barron entering the picture, all of a sudden the right-hand defenseman depth does not seem as bad as it was when the Canadians made the Mayu pick. Mayu himself, of course, adds to that, but there's still going to be a conversation that Kent Hughes and Jeff Gordon have to make when it comes to the future of this guy, whether or not they resign him, etc., etc., but like... I don't know, we'll get there when we get there. Talk to the comments on your thoughts about Stan Cohen versus Mayu and whether or not the Canadians made the right pick. I hope you enjoyed this video. And bye.